All right. Good, good evening. And it is Bourbon Blog Live here on bourbonblog.com forward slash live and all of our great channels. And we're talking with our friends from King's Family Distillery there in Sevierville, Tennessee. It's Cara King. It's Justin King. Cara's there. Justin's about to step into the shot. How are you, Cara? I'm good. I mean, I, I guess everybody's just kind of hanging in here. This is <laughs> the weirdest. I mean, who would have thought, you know? Well, it's it's a good thing we have some great spirits, whiskey, uh, and other products like the ones from King's Family Distillery to keep us happy and and uh, and warm. And so you all you all both have quite a great um history and reputation in the business. Give us a little bit of the story of how, and there's, hey, there's Justin King. How's it oh, going, Justin? Yeah, uh, give us a story about how um, how this whole thing came about, the King's Family Distillery. Well, we were, um, we've always thought about it, I think, but it was one of those things where I we're in the right place, the right time. We both have the right background. Uh, I used to be, with Brooks Grain, I think I've known you, Tom, for a long time since yeah. back that. I mean, we used yeah. to be there all the time at, at all the bourbon events in Louisville. So, and, and Bardstown and all that. So um, I, I had been in the bourbon industry for a decade and I was kind of getting a little bit of itchy feet, if you will. Um, I wanted to do something else. And because I have the connections that I have and Justin and I have been married and I, he has the knowledge of all the distillation and uh, all the chemistry behind it. We, we right. decided to, I guess, jump off the cliff, if you will. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's uh, you're both very talented people. Uh, and Justin, you know, you and I got to know each other years ago in, in, in Tennessee as well. And uh, we've had a lot of fun and we've all had some fun together. I, I often like to tell the story of how... Justin took me riding on what is it called? The is it the, the, gator? the razor? The razor. I was gonna say the gator. It's the razor through the mountains of uh, Gatlinburg, right? Yeah. That's. Yeah. Cool. I love showing that picture to uh, to people as well. But we've had a lot of fun, and, and you've done a lot of great things, and you've you've come out with some really amazing spirits uh, from the King's Family Distillery. And so, um, what you've made several things to start off with. What did you? What did you make to start off with, and and you know what was the thought process behind it? I and full disclosure, I buy all of our spirits, or at, at this time, I buy all of our spirits um, right. because I have that background in the industry. I know who makes what well and who has what for sale, and right. I, I we decided on particular mash bills, um, and then we finished them in house. In, in our little distillery, uh, in our tasting room here in Sevierville Pigeon Forge area. So my thoughts behind what our line, um, we, we started with honestly a vodka because it's easy to get. It's really good stuff. I it's really like it. It's a favorite. It's cocktail friendly. I was sitting here thinking what, what kind of cocktail I can make with it. Uh, I like to drink the ginger vodka with a squeeze of lime on ice with lime. It's just, it's something that you can sip on. It's sweet. It's spicy. You get that tartness from the lime. It, it's fantastic that way. Um, but when we started, we had a traditional vodka. It's an 80 proof vodka. Um, it won a gold medal at the 2019 um, International Craft Spirits Awards for up in the the Finger Lakes is where that one's called, right? Yeah. It, it's one metal, so it's it's very clean. It's a corn mash bill. Um, and then we expanded to, we have a blended whiskey, uh, which is a lot, I mean, it's just, a, it's so basic. It's like your entry level whiskey. Um, and then we have a bourbon, our black label bourbon, which is, it's this one. Um, yep. It's so nice. It's a 99% it's a corn mash bill. We decided on that mash bill um, based on the fact that there's not a whole lot of all corn mash bills out there. You know, it has one percent of barley, but that's just for the enzymatic activity. So um, we really dig the the 99% corn, um, and then we also have our rye whiskey, which is that's my personal favorite. 
Um, but we also had, what else? We have an apple whiskey too. And those were the ones that we really came out with first. Um, give, me one, give me one second. My, I, 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 I'm sorry. Not a problem. Uh, there we go. Sorry about that. You can say hi to Annabelle now. I didn't even know she was at the door. I was like, who is that knock? I'm so sorry. I'm it's all right. It's all right. It's just a breath. I was like, who is that at our back door? Okay. Please go ahead. Oh, not a problem. Now, so we, we want to make sure it wasn't somebody trying to sell us uh, whiskey because, you know, we have some. Yeah, it's, <laughs> we're trying to buy whiskey. <laughs> so I'm sure you might have a little. We have a couple. Yeah. Go, please go ahead. Um, but what, what we've done is what we do is uh, we finish everything in house. So we tailor our water to proof the barrels down or to proof the spirit down. We, we tailor the water specifically to each spirit. Right. Uh, the mineral content, the pH level, et cetera. I mean, just, Justin's the brain behind that part. Um, yes. Yeah. yeah, I mean, we just try to make everything balanced, have a good mouthfeel, and, and give you a, you know, a great bottle of whiskey. You're both so talented. Uh, what should we What should we try first? What do you want? What do you What do you like when you're doing these tastings? What do you all like to try first? Let's Let's do the black label bourbon. Yes, uh, these are all so good. I was just, uh, you know, thrilled to taste these, and it's uh, so good to see. You. What have things been like there? I mean, obviously, Sevierville is a um, is a place where tourism is so important and hospitality. You want to talk a little bit about that? What it's What's it looking like right now? It's, yeah. it's weird. Um, I've lived here all my life, so I've never seen the place a ghost town like this for so long. Um, it, it's. It's kind of scary, you know. You, you drive through town and nothing's happening, and you know, we're, we're used to seeing traffic backed up and right. you know, uh, people coming to the mountains, and we're used to seeing a lot of things that are just not happening this time of year. And it's it's very, it's different. It's weird. Well, it's, and usually this time of year, and I've only lived here five years, but usually this time of year, it's spring breakers. You know, you have a good solid six weeks of spring breaks happening all over and folks come down here because of Dollywood, the hiking, um, just all of the other attractions. So it's, it's been very, I mean, traffic's been great. I mean, but that's about yeah. all you can say about it. <laughs> yeah. For, for areas like this that rest so, so highly on, on, you know, hospitality, tourism. I mean, you know, we, we're thinking of everybody and we really tried to um, have tried to, Put a spotlight on charities that are doing uh, great work um, uh, for those causes uh, since we've been doing this. But it's, um, you know, it's great to have you guys. I'm glad that uh, you have you all been able to sell uh, whiskey from your place there that you said you had during COVID or you. Yeah, we've, we've been open. Uh, we limited our hours and we've offered hand sanitizer and we're uh, operating by the the cdc guidelines um no more than 10 people in a place at a time you know all of right. we're trying to check all the boxes right. um but you know online sales have been very good uh, right. obviously nobody can come out here so they are buying our products online but um it's been like a it's been like a february i'll say you right. know february here is very slow um it's the slowest month of the year so it's been like that so we i mean it's tedious but i i'm optimistic in the fact that our our bourbon is is pretty spectacular and our our whiskeys in general our all of our products i think are pretty really great what are we? This bourbon. This is this is very tasty, Carl. What are we tasting here? Uh, this is the ninety nine percent corn bourbon. It's our flagship bourbon. Um, I call it corn. Bourbon. Oh. Um, you get big notes of. Obviously, you poured something over something here. So, what do you what do you smell? What do you see? <laughs> We have a four-year-old. You're right. It's realities. It's it's, <laughs> it's the beauty of live TV that we're uh, we're yeah. all here. That's serious, honey. Something tells me a lot of people uh, watching us also have have that. Is there hopefully as they're having a good sip of something too? Um, and definitely, if, if it's anybody's, as you all are watching, if you have any questions for Justin and Cara, ask them down below and tell us what you're drinking. Right, Justin. We always like to hear what. People are drinking. This is beautiful stuff. So 99% corn. That's very high for a, a bourbon, but 
it's not unheard of, but it's very unique, right? It's a very unique mash bill. Yeah. Um, it shows this one. It's very sweet. Um, the place where we are in Tennessee, there's a lot of sweet wine. There's a lot of sweet things. So to have a bourbon this high of corn content, it definitely leads to the area of where we're from and where we live. And this is perfect for me to drink neat or on ice. Um, it's 87 proof. We proof this one down just a little bit because we want people to taste that sweetness. We want people to taste the corn that's in it. It's really nice. That corn, that sweetness against that barrel, it just there's so much good stuff going on here. Yeah, even even though it's you know it doesn't have all the cereal grains, there's definitely a lot of complexity to this bourbon. Oh yeah, wow, so nice to sip on. And again, this is the straight bourbon whiskey. It's about how old is this about? Then you said uh, this one here is is in the four and a half year range. Um, yeah, it's nice. It has it has some nice older complexities, even a little older than that on it. It's very yeah. Cool. We uh, we do everything is true single barrel. So we we literally barrel one barrel, you know, we bottle one barrel at a time. Right. So with a lot of this, um, we do get some barrels that are just astronomically better than the others. Right. And um, it's it's kind of interesting what we see and what we you know what we get from it. Yeah, it's very nice. Uh, a lot of great, a lot of great vanilla, a lot of those signature bourbon characters that you get on a really good bourbon whiskey but it's just it really pops nicely and um it's really good and yeah. this is one of the uh is this one of your the ones that you all put forward first i mean probably people love all of them all of them but is this one yeah, that I mean, you're known for this is the one that, that i prefer you know Cara's big on the rye whiskey she comes from the rye background right you know we'll get into that in a minute but um well this is my personal favorite you know the the proof is perfect the water is perfect. It's perfectly balanced. I think it's got just enough age. I don't think that we want to, you know, bottle these when they get much older. But, you know, I'm happy with it right where it is. Very nice. What, what, so you have these four spirits. What other spirits? Are these the main spirits you guys have? Or what other spirits do you have there? At, uh... I mean, we, we focus on bourbons and whiskeys. But, you know, living where we live, you know, we have to have some lower proof things, some sweeter things. You know, we do a blackberry whiskey. We do an apple whiskey. We have a peach whiskey coming out in two weeks. Um, the one thing that, that we've just never done, and, and it's kind of interesting and weird for where we're from, is we've not put anything in a jar yet. Haven't put in a jar. Yeah, um, we haven't put anything in a jar. So that's, you know, that's maybe an avenue that, that we would go down if, if somebody wanted us to do that for them. Yeah. But us personally, we just, you know, we just want to put good brown spirits in the bottle. Oh, yeah. This is really nice. You know, because, because we are on the topic, I, I do have to show this if I can make it work. Um, hold on. Uh, was I able to do it? Let me see it. Tell me if it works. I'm going to share this picture of, did that work? Yes. There we are. Yeah. That's yeah. me and you in your razor. I don't know, how, was that six, seven years ago maybe? Probably seven years ago. Seven years ago. <laughs> That was, a, you, that was a very fun event. A very funny. That event. was fun, and you took me. I think almost like a. Um, oh, there's Blair. She said she's drinking some King's Family Lemon Vodka. Very nice. Uh, you took. It was kind of like a roller coaster ride. I mean, we actually kind of almost went like upside down in some places. I think didn't we? Yeah, we we went. Um, there's a a big park here, not a park, but um, probably on land that we were near, and we spent I think about an hour, hour and a half just. Riding around up there. Yeah. That's how I grew up. I mean, that's that was a good time. I had a lot of fun. You see, see, I found that picture easily. I, it's a, it's a good story to tell. And uh, at some point, do you still ride your razor? Are you still have one? I actually don't have one currently. All right. The, uh, the four year old. That's pretty much all he wants. He got a motorcycle for his fourth birthday, so he's um, he's very invested in the motorsports industry right now. No, we're invested with him in the motorsports industry right now. <laughs> Some point we'll go back out on one, but I just had to show that it's uh, always always a good time with you both. Well, this bourbon is is, is beautiful, and again, uh, people that are watching this that want to find it, uh, what's where, where can they find your your spirits? Go to our website. Uh, we have a button that says "Order Now." Um, we can ship to thirty states right now. Unfortunately, Kentucky's not one of them. But Indiana is one. Indiana is one. Good, good. Yeah. That's good. Um, we have 
eight of our 10 spirits available uh, for shipment. And it's, it's actually been pretty good for us. Um, it's, we're, we're really pleased with, with our online presence right now. You know, we're obviously growing, but, um, and also in all over East Tennessee, uh, we'll make a push into Nashville second half of this year and Chattanooga region as well. We're in talks to go into, um, Ohio and Kentucky right now also, but we're, we're all about the slow growth. Um, we want sustainable growth. Uh, we don't want to compromise our values of sustainability. We also want to make sure that um, we can back everything up with quality product too. Right. So, Excellent. Yeah, you know, online is, is the way of, I, I mean, it's obviously now online is about the only way you can do anything. So, King, King's family distillery.com. Yes. Yeah, go there uh, for all their wonderful products. Okay, so we start with the bourbon. Where do we, where do we want to go to next? Where do, you, where do you guys like to go to from there? Um, Let's go to the rye whiskey. You want to go to the rye? Okay, our ninth proof rye. It's it's an odd rye mash bill. Um, it's a fifty one percent rye mash bill, and I actually sourced the rye for this for the barrels. Yes. Excellent. You want me? No, oh, Justin's gonna go. <laughs> Justin's gonna go wrangle a four-year-old now. All right, cool. <laughs> Very nice. Um, so you forced yeah. it, and that's was as you said, part of your background is is with the grains and with um yes, with the, product, product. You know the best yeah. grains on. my favorite. Yeah. Um it's a 90 proof rye. I think rye should be at least 90 proof, and this mm -hmm. is beautiful at 90 proof. Can you wave? <laughs> <laughs> How's it going? Good. I haven't seen. I haven't seen him for a long time. Yeah, I know. Oh, look at that. Very nice. Yeah, get your finger out of your nose. <laughs> it's, a grand, it's a grand appearance. That's all right. I know. We all do it. We he just, has, we're nosing on our own way, and so is he. Right? Exactly. We all have our own way of nosing things. No. I'm <laughs> so, um, but this rye, it's it's very sweet because it's a fifty-one percent rye mash bill. Um, I chose the 51% rye because it's unique or more unique. Uh, 95 is kind of the standard in cocktails. It's the standard really on the bar. You have your the most popular rye right now are 95. I like the 51 because it's kind of an entry into rye. You don't quite get all of the spice off the bat. It's more gradual. Um, you get the licorice. You get the anise. You get the but you also get the the elements of the corn as well. So it's yeah. it's just really and it's, it's really great in a in a in old fashioned. We gotta try that later. That sounds yeah. really good. We're gonna be. Are you are you doing anything for uh, what would have been uh, Derby Day tomorrow? Unfortunately, no. We were hoping to go. Um, I've yeah. been. I was, you've been before, haven't you? Pardon? Yeah, you a times. I was there in uh, 2009, and then again in 2014. Justin's never been. Uh, Weirdly enough, my family's background is in, we have horse racing in our background. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's, it's something that I, I was really sad to see Derby postponed, but at the same time, I mean, it is what it is. So. Right. Well, well, I'll mention this because we have quite a few great viewers and one of them just said he was going to order some products from your website. And that's again, kingsfamilydistillery.com. Uh, the thing we're doing tomorrow, just so you all will know, because we just announced it a little bit earlier, is we're having a, a grand celebration uh, tomorrow called Derby Day from Home that Bourbon Blog is hosting. Uh, everyone from uh, Tony Abuganan to Anthony Caparelli, Molly Wellman, a lot of great uh, mixologists from across the country, and several celebrities joining us uh, to be interviewed, to talk fashion, horses. It's going to be about five and a half hours. So. Later, after this interview, everybody watching, go to bourbonblanc.com forward slash derby day. It's the whole schedule there. And uh, we may just have to um, take some of this rye. We're going to be making all kinds of cocktails, mint juleps and everything. Maybe we'll, maybe we'll try a mint julep with your bourbon even. It could happen. A good julep. Our our bourbon makes a fabulous julep because it, it lends to the sweetness nice. of the julep. You know, we, we did actually in a derby cup from the 135th. We did that because we've been doing quarantinis. 
which yeah. quarantinis are actually it's a it's a term from a podcast. It's that a term from what? I love. Yeah, they've been calling it a quarantine. It's called This Podcast Will Kill You. It's two epidemiologists who have had a podcast for several years now. And they all have a quarantine to drink while you're learning about the flu or, (laughs) you know, tuberculosis. or And they they kind of make the whole thing fun. And they make science fun, which I like. So I like science and I like fun. No, that's great. Yeah. You're, you're right. You're right. And I'll put this website up there too, because uh, one gentleman was asking there, uh, kingsandwichdistillery.com. That's that's where you order from. I think it was Andy who was asking. This rye is really nice, though. It's um, there's a lot of complexity, but there's a nice softness about it. A really good entry, a good mouthfeel. Yeah, it's it's the it's the ninety proof. Uh, it's the water we use, and it's the fifty one percent rye mash bill. Fifty one percent rye, forty five corn, and four percent malted barley. Like I said, I, I used to source all the rye. So I know every barrel that I own, I know where the rye came from. I know where the corn came from and I know where the malt came from because I, I you know, used to be on the supply side. Right. So it's, it's something, I mean, we're not, we're not, we may not be distilling things ourselves, but we have the knowledge behind it and we trust the people who do distill I it. I love that. No, I love that you all have that knowledge and that expertise. And when it comes to those grains, Cara, um, are those? Do you do you talk about where those grains are, are from? What states? I mean, I know that there's a wealth of grains in, in the general region we're in, the Midwest and South. But where where are the best grains, and what what makes them the best? It depends on um, the grain. So corn is best grown in what's called the Corn Belt. So that would be Indiana, Iowa, Illinois, um, through Ohio has great corn. Kentucky has great corn as well. It just depends on the soil and um, and and the the organoleptics really, which is the sm- what they call the smell test. So if if it smells good, like it's going to make good bourbon, it's going to make good bourbon. Um, rye is best grown. I call it above the I ninety line. Okay. Uh, even the I eighty line. Um, so it's northern tier states into Canada, Saskatchewan, Manitoba, Alberta. There's a bunch grown in uh, Ontario. And then in um, Scandinavian countries, Germany is a huge producer. Poland is a huge producer. So when I was sourcing, I sourced from Canada. I sourced from the United States and I sourced from Europe as well. So it, it, it all just depends. It depends on the growing season. It's It's so... Fickle, and it's so um, just it's dependent on so many different factors. The best grains are generally grown in those areas. However, it also depends on weather conditions or um, climate conditions, etc. So, I mean, it's it's kind of it's, it's kind of a crapshoot sometimes. <laughs> it sucks, but you know, we were always able to make it work. Um, and I was able to keep a, a pretty decent customer base on how we were able to source and then how we were able to sell. So it's grains are the biggest component, obviously also water, water's huge in distillation, but, um, but grains are, you know, and I would when you use the right grains and the right, and the right, everything, it just makes the best whiskey. And that's what you all have done. It's so, so nice. So someone someone just bought. Uh, Andy says he just bought two blackberry whiskeys from your website because blackberries help kill the corona. So there's a oh, there maybe an added benefit of blackberry whiskey. Well done, Andy. I like the blackberry whiskey with unsweet tea, like just an iced mm. tea. Yeah. Or, um, because it's it's very sweet, but it's made with real blackberry juice. Uh, it's only sixty one proof, but that makes it super dangerous because you really you can chill it and drink it and not notice until you stand up, which is dangerous. But um, the blackberry whiskey is also really good with a very tart lemonade. So like it, it, even just with a slice of lemon or a slice of lime, it's it's delightful. Nice, that's great. No, it's I, I it, it's all really good stuff. The rye is very tasty. The bourbon is great. Okay, if we went, if we had the third pick, I'm gonna guess. Are we gonna go to the 
Are we going to go to the weeded bourbon next? And then end oh, with the ginger? Better. Well, the ginger is usually the dessert. So that's what I was thinking. They're all really good though. Ginger for dessert always. I'll tell you this. I had some of that, uh, the ginger about an hour ago. I was getting ready for this. I'm like, this is the softness. Every everything about it was really good. I was really impressed. It's quite I lovely. I I really love the ginger. I'm mean, honestly on ice. It's yeah. The best way to drink it. Just They're all very tasty. All right, this is the wheated bourbon, with I, I would imagine a higher um, wheat. Um, oh, okay. So here's a question someone has: uh, How do you make the apple and blackberry whiskey? Someone's asking mm -hmm. on YouTube. Um, so what we're doing is we're we're using a two year old whiskey to make them for the taste. Um, these are flavored products. So the blackberry is actually blackberry juice. Um, there is some sugar in it to make it sweet. Excellent. And we have an acid blend to put it together. Um, the apple product that we do is Gala Apple Forward. So it's basically just whiskey base, apple flavorings, and um, all the acids that are, in a, that are in a natural apple. Nice. Um, is what we're doing. And, and what makes a, a really crazy good cocktail is a shot of apple, a shot of rye whiskey, and a splash of Coke makes an incredible cocktail. That does sound good. That's <laughs> really good. Yeah. And we yeah. try to we try to stick as to as natural of products as we can. Um obviously there, there are things we have to manipulate like sweetness. We only use cane sugar. Um we don't use corn sugar. It's just the mouth feels better, in my opinion. I mean, there's corn sugar is great, but for our products in particular, it's it's cane sugar. When, for the flavored products, um, it, it, just, it just, the mouth feels better and the, the flavor profile just works better, you know? Wow. Very nice. This wheat, this, I can tell this is really, uh, and of course I love the uh, original bourbon, but the wheat has a whole different uh, flavor. It's, it's a totally different animal. Um, this is something that, you know, we, we bought from MGP. It's something the MGP has never really done much is any wow. bourbons. And uh, I think they absolutely nailed this one. It really is good. And and there's a lot of complexity just on the nose. I could just get right away. There's even a bit of um kind of a light smoke on this. I mean, there's there's a lot going on on this. Yeah, and a lot of that's got to do with it's a hundred proof. We chose that proof because wheat tends to drink at a higher proof to me. Right. Um, the water base and mineral base of this is a lot different than the bourbon or the rye because we want to, you know, we want to bring out the complexity in this one. And so, you know, we, we're putting a lot more minerals in this. We filter it a lot less than we do the bourbon and the rye. Wow. Um, and it's, it's very interesting. That's for sure. It's very tasty. And again, is this about the same? This is in the four, the, the four to five year range. Four to five year old. Some nice smokes, the the wheat that softness really hits you, um, and it's just it's it's really lovely. How do you how do you like to do this one? Do you have any favorite uh, cocktails or anything with it? Or uh, this one to me, um, I was drinking a lot of this, and I hate to say this even on on, on a live span, but I love this with ginger ale. Oh, I bet so. That the spices would work well with it. Yeah, it does, and that's like ginger ale or ginger beer is, is my jam with this one. That's my just personal a splash, favorite. though. Just yeah, a splash, just a splash to bring it out. I think. Yeah, I'll bring it up. Yeah. Hey, buddy. Sorry. That's all right. He's come back. Yeah, he's. Bless <laughs> you. <laughs> That's great. You gotta, you gotta enjoy it. We love the fact this is all done from our homes, and uh, much like uh, a lot of the late night uh, folks, and even um, Sarah and Live, it's fun, fun to come to you from our basements, our homes, and bring you some good whiskey and taste some great things with uh, fun people like the King's Family Distillery founders, Justin Carr King. Um, you're, you, are, you guys are doing a great job. And I, I, the grain expression, uh, the, the, the whiskeys that you're using, the spirits, the grain, everything is really well thought. Um, and whenever whenever COVID ends, is there a, a, can people come visit you? How, what, what, what do they get to see? Right now, um, Tennessee is slowly but surely opening up. So today, most restaurants can open up 
with you know every other table six feet apart etc we actually went out to lunch at one of our favorite places today here in town oh wow um, just because we want to support a local you know locally owned businesses um so i it's starting to open up we've had our our gift shop has been open because we haven't had any restrictions and we've been have we've had hand sanitizer available as well you know, it's it's something that that we wanted to do for the community as well as the people who work for us or work with us. I would probably rather say we, we just wanted to make sure that people were still having an income. Um, but I would say once all of this ends, we'll probably you know we'll expand our hours. We will probably be full steam ahead with tastings and um especially in the area in because we we like to do if it's local we like to be able to be at the liquor store or at the bar doing promos we like to do it ourselves we're very hands-on so once all this ends our calendar is going to get a little more crowded so well well that's good so so today was the day then that a lot of things reopened yeah, and Thing, things opened. Um, you know, we're seeing weirdly enough, we're seeing a lot of campers come into town. You know, people are you know, they're bringing what they're used to, but they're enjoying yeah. it and they're being safe doing it. That's good. So, you know, we, we've seen a, a good influx come into town today, and hopefully, everybody's you know, keeping distance and staying safe. And you know, we'll try to get through this, and you know, maybe maybe the fall of next year will be better. But right now, we have to do what we have to do. Right. Someone just asked, which is best to start with, bourbon or rye? I think you all like to go starting with your 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 bourbon first. I when I do a tasting because I work the tasting bar quite a bit, um, and I usually start if I'm going to go through the browns. I do our bourbon, our black label bourbon. And I usually move to the yellow label bourbon because next to each other, you get to see two totally different styles of bourbon. Um, and it could be because they're very, very different. Um, and then I move to the rye whiskey because the rye whiskey has that spice. It has that complexity. Um, but if you want to go proof wise, I'd go, bur well, you have to go bourbon, rye, and then weeded bourbon. So. It just depends on the style. Usually I, I go with um, what the the customer wants, where they want to go. If they trust me, then I've, I've got a lineup. So Someone uh, just said they are great ambassadors of brown liquor. We love having them in the restaurant. The juice is awesome. Jeffrey Dickert. Like he, has, uh, oh, he, carries some of your, he carries some of your whiskey, it sounds like. Yeah. We're, Jeff's a, a great restaurant tour what's what's your restaurant he uh, works with have you have you been to the greenbrier in gatlinburg have yes you? yes so they've redone it and it's it's new now it's it's revamped and okay excellent jeff's taking care of that he's done an awesome job with the bar yep. and the staff is awesome Very nice. they're amazing um best i would say it's one of the best restaurants in east tennessee Bar none. It's the ambiance is fabulous. The food is fantastic. Their whiskey bar is second to none. Excellent. Really good. All these are so tasty. The weeded, the bourbon, the rye, just all um, great whiskeys. And um, and then we left the uh, let's finish with ginger. The ginger flavored vodka for uh, for dessert. And um, you know, I don't. I, I've had a variety of flavored vodkas. I don't know if I've had many that are. Ginger ever got another glass over here. Um, this know, is a unique flavor of vodka, right? You don't see that every day. There's a very funny story behind this vodka. Yep. Um, Cara brought a bottle of this from Minnesota home. Yeah, I brought a bottle of ginger vodka home, and we we liked it, but there was something missing. There was a note missing, and Justin, being basically a flavor chemist, came up with this. You know, he took different you know, natural flavors from different companies and blended it with our uh, vodka. We actually got in a, a, not necessarily an argument, but we had a standoff on 
whether or not it would be it would sell well and it's funnily enough it's always in the top three now <laughs> well, you, I, I love that great mm -hmm. so you could tell there was something missing and you knew there was another element that needed to be added. yeah exactly. And, exactly and that's one of those things where like i tasted this product that she liked and i go i can do this better mm -hmm. and so i put my my mind to it and Spent a few nights drinking ginger vodka. <laughs> so. Yeah, it happens. So when you're thinking through that, when you're tasting, whether it's a whiskey or a vodka, and you're saying, how could I do this better? What are you, what are you looking for? You know, I'm looking for, you want flavor. You want, the, you want the, the taste that you're tasting to be what I call round. So you want, the, you want the flavor to be good on the front of the palate, the middle of the palate, and the back of the palate. Then you want to taste it afterwards. And you want to say, dang, that was a good, that was a good glass or that was a good drink. And so when you start to do those things, there's so many balancing factors, you know, there's so many different ways to, to do that. And it's got to, to do with the sugar you use or the acid content and the type of acid in the water. And then ultimately the spirit has to be the, the perfect base too. Right. So it's a balance of all those things and it's really it's kind of an art that a lot of people, you know, they drink things, they taste things, or they eat this great food, but it's the art of the, the person putting it together. And at the end of the day, I think on this one, it's just a well-rounded spirit. It is. I, I think all of yours have a well-rounded um, flavor to them. They have flavor arcs. They start one place, they go another. Very clean finish, very refreshing. Uh, to me, this, and I've had other ginger spirits. I mean, so for people who are watching, whether you're, usually drink vodka or not, I would almost categorize this, even though this is a vodka, if you're watching and you say, I'm a whiskey fan, I don't usually drink vodka or whatever the case may be. To me, this is a spirit that just can be added, whether by itself or in a cocktail can be added as a compliment just because it has this distinct flavor uh, that's so soft, so well balanced that it's just, I mean, I don't even think of when I drink it, I'm like, this is good. I don't even think vodka, but I mean, yeah. I, I like it. I think of it as just something to drink. Like we, we, yeah. have, we have to yeah. put vodka on it. It's, it's yeah. a liqueur, really. Yeah. It, what's anything? It's more of a liqueur. But I, I love the fact that people that are, uh, that have this great uh, collection of whiskeys also have this really unique vodka. I think it's uh, cool. they're very special. Yeah. It's funny because a lot of the folks locally, when they come in and, you know, we're, we're very active in our local, like, Facebook groups and like the Knoxville Bourbon Society and, and things like that. They come in, they come in for a tasting, they meet us and they taste the ginger vodka and they'll buy a bottle of bourbon and then they take a bottle of ginger vodka too. Like, like, good. It's really just, it's, it's special. It's different. Yeah. yeah. It's very soft, uh, very smooth. Um, it's all good. It's all so nice. And the cocktail, you again, you, you mentioned earlier, you like it? Annabelle's trying it too over here. She really likes it too. Uh, the cocktail that you you said you really enjoy making with this one is what? The ginger vodka. Oh, I like it just with a a, a little bit of a lime. That's it. Lime. This on ice, ginger vodka on ice, and squeeze some fresh lime. I mean, you can use roses, but there's I like a good fresh lime because of the tartness. The tart brings out the spice, I think. So it's um, it's very timeless and just very, you know, it's good in so many ways. I could see how this could be appreciated by so many places, so many different cultures. Somebody asks um, here, my whiskey den on YouTube, asking, "What is the release you're most proud of?" I'm sure you're proud of a lot of these, but is there one you're most proud of, or even one that's coming that you're uh, working on? For me, it's definitely the bourbon. Like our black label bourbon is definitely where my heart is. And I know like exactly what Cara's going to say. We'll be coming out with a limited release rye whiskey where we take our our rye and right. then we age it. We proof it down um, to under what we receive it at. And we have put it into a grooved barrel, a 30 gallon grooved barrel. So you get all of the different toast, all of the different char, um, and you get so much more surface area. And we aged it for a year. 
Um, and we'll be we'll be hopefully coming out with this product and it's only gonna be available in store. It's very limited. It's just, again, 30 gallons. It'll be uh, whatever proof it comes out at, you know, barrel proof. Um, but it's that's the product that I'm really excited about because it's probably one of the better rye whiskeys I've had. And I, I would honestly at three months, I almost told Justin to dump the barrel because I hated it at three months. But now at a year, it's absolutely spectacular. It's the complexity that I mean, you can there's, probably go on about there's it. so many notes to this because of that grooved barrel. So what this barrel is, it's a number four charred barrel, and then it was run through a like a grooving saw. So not only do you get the number four char, you get all the toast of what happened. Wow. The complexity of this product is insane. Amazing. So, it's really good. Yeah, and you know, we're only gonna get so many bottles out of these barrels, and we're only gonna it's only it's gonna be very limited, but this is a fun product. It's definitely a way to get somebody into the rye whiskey category. And that the proof will be right around 110 or something there. Yeah, what we did, we I proofed it down to 110 and then put it in the barrel there. So the proof, the last sample we checked was about 109. And a half. Wow. So this is gonna be a it's gonna be a fun, cool project for sure. That's that's exciting. So so a lot of things um Coming from the King's Family Distillery uh, coming up, uh, more and more releases that you all will be working on over the years to watch for, and I'm sure you'll be in um, more and more places. Yeah, and that's and that's the you know what we're working on is sustainable growth. You know, we don't you know we're two people; we can only do so much. So you know, it's it's growing at our speed, and we want to put our touch on everything. Yeah, well, you guys are doing a great job, uh, the two of you there, and uh, with a lot of ex expertise experience in the business uh did you did you guys did you all meet over a whiskey is that how you all met how did you all meet we met at adi 2013 funnily enough um we just uh, we ended up it was in what denver, in denver. and we, <laughs> it was at the marriott downtown denver and there's what a yard house upstairs in their lobby and we ended up hanging out for like 12 13 hours yeah for from when they opened because we were both i would i didn't have a booth and you know he was just there because you know his former employer had him there and we just i was like hey you want to go drink beer he's like sure i like beer so that's <laughs> how we met yeah. like do you like beer? <laughs> so we had a cup. We probably had our first three dates within twelve hours, <laughs> which was cool. I mean, and then I, I came down here and I did the whole razor tour. Yeah, you did that too. Right? It was awesome. Um, and then I don't know. I was I had I had moved to Kentucky to Louisville to do my job, and then I just moved a little bit further south. Very nice. That's great. So it was. It was. Uh, it was in many ways whiskey distilling all that that brought you all uh, together. One hundred percent. One hundred percent. That's great. She she had the supply side. And I knew the distilling side. So <laughs> you conquer the world together. I like it. Very nice. Well, well done to you all. It's such such great products. We're so excited to uh, taste these with you and and you've um, and you've won some awards on these too. Most recently, we uh, won a best in show placement with the rye whiskey. Um, both of our bourbons were listed in the 50 best bourbons and just scattered throughout. Uh, I, I can't remember what we did in San Francisco. We meddled in San Francisco. We meddled a lot of our products in Denver. We've meddled a lot of our products and won double golds in at the barley corn awards this last year so you know we're just entering and winning i it's it's all 100 percent the presentation and what what justin has, has and, done with and literally what we do is, is pull a bottle off the shelf and send it we don't hand pick them 
No. You're just going, and that's what you've always done from what you, I remember you told yeah. me. You always yeah. just even, even back in, in my, my old days where. Right, I remember you told me that. Yeah, we just take a, we, we pride ourselves in just going and grab a bottle off the shelf, put it in the box, and send it. Just knowing that it's that good, right. Yep, just, I mean, we, that way, you know, there is no hand picking. There is no. No. I want to send this or I want to send that. It's right. like, we're just going to go pull or we're going to sell somebody. Right. And that's what we right. do. Well done. Well, definitely. This is so great to see you both and have a sip with you. And again, for those of you watching, uh, long on. Oh, there it is. Kingsfamilydistillery.com. Take a look at what they're doing. Follow them on social media. And, uh, and we do this every night, of course, on our Bourbon Blog Live. There's another banner for you. Uh, at Eastern Time, 8, 8 p.m. Eastern Time, bourbonblog.com forward slash live. And then tomorrow, we're, I'm going to have a few drinks, Justin. I'm gonna, we're going to go from like 1 o'clock to 6, I think 6.30 or something. Well, like that. You know, it's so weird, too. Like, normally me and you are drinking it at ADI or ACS. Right. Or, you know, I look, I look so forward to Portland and New Orleans, and it just didn't happen. I know. No. Yeah. Yeah. Always good seeing you all so many in so many great places, uh, and hopefully it'll be sometime soon in uh, in Tennessee. But um, uh, there's the website. If you all get a chance, Justin and Cara or anybody watching, tune in tomorrow. We'll have things all day long to celebrate Derby. And, of course, I know there's a lot of Derby celebrations that are going on on TV. It's really cool what's, what's what everybody's gotten into. So we're, we're happy to be a, a part of this on Bourbon Blog. Live. So, well, thank you all so much for joining us. If if anybody watching uh, got here um, like halfway through, these videos will be up permanently on Twitter, YouTube, and Facebook. Rewind, go back, watch it, and we're also going to put this up on our um, bourbonblog.com podcast as well, so people can listen to the audio as they sip. Awesome. Well, thank you. You're so welcome. Cheers, y'all. Here, I'll, I'll pour. I'll pour something here and I'll, I'll toast to you guys. And, uh, what are you pouring? I'm going to pour a little of the weeded. I liked them all, but the weeded was very close. I, I do like all of them. I think they're all very, very special in um, so many ways. They're so good. I I, I poured myself a rye. Sorry. I, poured myself a rye. <laughs> I know Justin's favorite is the weeded, but I, I'm just, again, partial. But... Cheers. Cheers. Cheers, Connor and Justin. Great to see you all. And thank you all who are watching for joining us tonight live. We're here every night. We'll catch you all later. Thank you. Cheers. See you.